Need for Speed Heat. You're probably playing it. I'm probably playing it. Everyone is playing Need for Speed Heat. Need for Speed Heat is probably the best Need for Speed game, at least since Hot Pursuit 2010. I don't know, maybe down the road I'll say it's even better than Hot Pursuit 2010, but for right now, for, my, for me, it's the best Need for Speed game since Hot Pursuit 2010. A lot of people are echoing similar sentiments, okay? Need for Speed Heat is arguably a great game, and it's a great basis for Ghost to build upon, unlike Payback. Payback, they you had to focus too much on actually fixing core aspects of the games, things that were missing instead of actually act adding new content. But here with Need for Speed Heat, they can really forego the fixing issues. All they really have to do is fix a lot of the issues on PC in terms of optimization and texture issues, and then they can go from there upon improving the game, building it up more, which is really awesome. But there is one issue, something that I think is should be the first thing they address after they get fixed with all the texture issues and bugs, and that is PvP. Now, right now, I am level 50 in Need for Speed Heat, rep level 50. My crew that I'm in is rep level 50. We have unlocked the FXKK. Um, I don't have it yet. I'm currently grinding enough races to actually afford the FXKK because it's $2.2 million on top of reaching crew level 50. But once I get this car, what else is there to do? Like, after you've done everything in the game, you've beaten the story, you've done all the racing side missions or whatever, the driver stories, and you've gotten all the cars you want, what really is there to do? There really isn't anything kind of driving you forward. Um, nothing really keeping you coming back. And I don't want to compare this game to The Crew 2, but The Crew 2, for as bad as The Crew 2 is, there is still something that brings people back to the game, and that is the PvP, and that is the Summit. Now, I'm not saying the Need for Speed Heat needs something like the Summit. That takes a lot of effort to put in. You need a lot of manpower just to keep that running and fresh every week, which they're obviously failing with with the crew, too. But if you want to look at a better game like Forza, you have Forza-thon every week. There's a new Forza-thon event, and there's new cars and everything. Again, with how big Ghost Games is, I'm not really expecting a Forza-thon level-esque thing feature to come to Need for Speed Heat. That would be awesome, but I'm not really expecting it anytime soon. What I do want to see though, and something I think this is the first thing that should come, is PvP. Structured speed lists like we had in Payback and 2015. Now, don't get me wrong, speed lists in Payback and 2015 weren't the best. I had a lot of fun in speed lists in 2015, but that's just because I really kind of like 2015. But speed lists in Payback were just awful, <laughs> okay? I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. Um, and the main reason why these two things were awful was because of the netcode. Um, and then also because there was only like three cars that were viable, all the others like were just not viable. There were three cars that were OP, the RSR, the Hurricane, and the Beetle, I think, in Payback was very OP. As well as the Regera, so I actually make that four. But you actually kind of have that same problem in Need for Speed Heat. The Regera and the RSR are both very overpowered. I'm not sure about the Hurricane or the Beetle, but I know for a fact those two are very OP. Cam made a great video on that. Be sure to check that out. Um, I'll leave that link down below in the description. But that's something that kind of need to work and just nerf. For like, like that the RSR and Hurricane have been in the Regera. They've been OP for like years now. The RSR has been OP for like five years nearly. So once they balance, they need to balance that, especially for PvP. Hopefully, with like the way you can actually engine swap cars in this game, I'm hoping that that makes a lot of new cars viable in pvp but i'm um, again pvp really kind of needs to be there for like end game that way you always have something to go on like you always have there's always new people to race like you're not just racing ai over and over and over again you're actually racing against real people i like that alone would bring a lot of people back because the racing game scene at least for arcade race purely arcade racing the only outlet they have for pvp is the crew 2 and the crew 2 is dog shit so like i don't think people are going to be going to that anytime soon, but Need for Speed has a really good opportunity to capitalize and corner the ra arcade racing game PvP market, the very small one that it is, but they can still capitalize on that because they have a really good foundation for it. And also, when it comes to netcode, netcode really isn't a problem in this game. Like, when you can actually still play, like, again, with people in this game in the online all drive, and I can actually, like, rub against someone and crash into them or, like, drive really close to them, slipstream them, and I'm not hitting them, I'm not shadow ramming them or anything like that was, a, like, I would in Payback or 2015. It's not a big deal in this game because, like, the netcode is 
very well optimized. Well, uh, <laughs> compared to Payback in 2015, it's very well optimized. I'm not sure how it stands next to like Forza or like a racing sim or something, but it's very good. The netcode is, for the most part, fixed. There are still little issues with it, but for the most part, it's fixed. The physics, again, for the most part, are fixed. Um, the only thing they really need to focus on is nerfing some cars that have been OP for years now. And then also, when it comes to speedless, um, when they do come out, I'm kind of hoping that they're like I wouldn't mind just a bare bones PvP list coming out now, but with like a more robust system coming out later in the future. Just something to keep people coming back to the game after they've reached level 50, after they've beaten the game, and after they've gotten the most expensive car and have ranked up their crew to the highest level. There needs to be something there for the end game. Um, this isn't like 2004 or 5 anymore when like games could get away with that stuff. Um, even then, games like games like Most Wanted and Carbon, they had multiplayer, um, especially on like the 360 and X and the PlayStation 3. They had multiplayer, and on top of having the main campaign, on top of having the challenge series as well. So, Need for Speed Heat kind of needs that end game multiplayer in a way. It needs structured PvP. Um, again, even in Here's the thing, Ghost could even capitalize on this. If a lot of people play it, they could actually create like a competitive PvP system. I know they tried with Payback, but the foundation really wasn't there. And it was just all glitchy and no one ever did it. But if they see enough people are playing PvP, they can easily create a competitive PvP system in Need for Speed Heat. Along with ranks and everything. Like that, like that is why I spent so much time playing the Crew 1 PvP. Trying to get the Platinum 1 and everything. It was addicting. It wasn't the best PvP implementation in a racing game. But it was still really addicting. So if they add something like this to D for Speed Heat. I can guarantee you that that will bring tons of people back to your game. And keep tons of people playing it. And if they keep going with this like live service thing. That the Crew is doing. That the For that Force is doing. They can easily corner a good chunk of the racing game market and keep people coming back and really give games like the crew 2 and even forza a run for their money but it all starts with keeping people entertained and it all starts with keeping people playing your game and i think that starts a great first step is implementing some sort of pvp system like speed list i think that's what ghost should do first what do you guys think ghost should do first with need for speed heat again need for speed heat is just kind of for me like not necessarily a blank canvas, but it's a canvas that they can build on top of. It's something they can keep expanding and make even an even greater game. And the fact that the game is just great on its own is awesome, but it, I, I kind of see it as like something that they can really expand upon if they really work hard. What do you guys think about it? Be sure to leave your suggestions down below in the comments section. But that's all for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a good one, guys.